John Coltrane, the pioneering American jazz saxophonist, and Alice Coltrane, the groundbreaking jazz pianist and harpist, two composers who are at the forefront of free jazz, transcending the bounds of form and breaking down the walls of jazz, looking for something new. I am Daniel Molyneux of the Barbican Young Reviewers, here to see a series of performances evoking their legacies on the 50th anniversary of John's passing and the 10th anniversary of Alice's. Froa Sanders is another artist pivotal in the growth of free jazz, a part of the Coltrane's legacy himself contributing to Train's last album and the music of Alice that followed in his wake. He'll be headlining tonight. Starting the trinity of performances was Alina Brzezinska's quartet, exploring Alice Coltrane's transporting and spiritual music. As a newcomer to jazz, I'm used to it being characterised by the saxophone, but what was surprising was that there was no saxophone in her first piece. Instead, the lead instrument was a harp, played by Alina Brzezinska herself. She was like an artist on stage. She would paint in very fine detail, plucking delicately at the strings. She would use sweeping brush strokes, strumming with large hand movements, and sometimes she would simply just flick paint at the page as she plucked randomly at the strings. She was tugging at my heartstrings. She managed to encompass so many emotions in her pieces. It was like a long exposure, everything blurring into a single moment and all the more beautiful for it. It was everything going in multiple directions. It was anarchy. It was beautiful chaos. Next up was Denise Baptiste Quartet, whose music was down to earth and yet also like a higher power. It was enchanting. Everyone was swept up in the music, whether they were playing or whether they were listening. The audience was bobbing along throughout the whole thing. At times, I was tapping my foot so hard, my leg was aching. I took delight in the drummer's facial expressions, but his talent was undeniable. He simply let loose like Animal the Drummer from the Muppets. In his solo, as he was about to strike the final beat before everyone joined in, he stopped in midair. The tension was palpable throughout the room as we waited for his drumstick to hit the cymbal. The artists were playful as well as resolute. When Steve Williamson walked on stage to join Denise Baptiste, he shook the drummer's hand and high-fived the double bassist. There was a friendship, a connection between you and the players. They each got their own time to shine, as well as playing together. So, it finally came to the iconic Faroa Sanders. His quartet's music was more mature than the others, Though for me, it didn't have the anarchy, the vitality of the younger players. For a man of his age, Froa played amazingly, although in short bursts, as he had to sit down to regain his breath. In these moments, it was like he was reminiscing, listening to the music, paying homage to John and Alice. One thing I don't doubt is that Froa will ever lose his ability to work a crowd, whether he was playing, singing, dancing or clapping, there was a religious fervour and adoration in the crowd. For what will I take away from tonight? Well, a newfound love for jazz, for its explosive power, its emotional intensity, its anarchy, its resonance. Jazz is raw. Jazz is bold. Jazz is whatever you feel like. Jazz is why not? Jazz is living, and most of all, jazz is best live. Mm -hmm.